Good morning, everybody. We're live here from the birdhouse. We are in the month of August, and that means there are a lot of insects out there, especially butterflies. So I thought I would talk about some of the different products we have to better attract butterflies to your yard and also some little uh, some things if you're interested in raising some on your own and some books that I think you would enjoy on them that are some of my favorites. So I'll show you the books first, um, but as usual, we always love to know who's on. If you're on, you can just say hi in the comments. If you have any questions, you can throw those in there as well, um, or just give us your sightings. We love to know what kind of things you're seeing out there um, with it being the summer. We're starting to get some of the fall migration uh, coming through the area, but we'll see more of that as we get into the fall. There's lots of baby birds out there and they are hungry. So um, yeah, any kind of sightings you guys have, just absolutely throw them in the comments. As far as butterflies go, there's a few different books that I really like, and I'll show you the ones um, that I would recommend. There's Quite a few, but um, this Peterson one has been around forever. It's the Peterson First Guide to Butterflies and Moths. So if you're just kind of getting started and you want to learn some of the main differences between some of the more common butterflies we have around here, this is a really, really good book. It doesn't have every single butterfly that you'll find in the area, but it has you know, some of them, the more common ones. So this is a really great book for not only adults, but for kids as well. So um, this is called the Peterson First Guide. They have Peterson First Guide for birds, for mammals, reptiles, um, but this Butterflies and Moths one is a really good introductory book if you're starting to get interested in butterflies and butterfly gardening. And as you go on, there are different ones that I find I really like, and these are some of my favorites here. I love this one, The Life Cycle of butterflies because it not only tells you about uh, the host plants that the butterfly needs, so those are the plants that the butterfly will lay its eggs on in order to develop, so that caterpillar will eat those leaves that the egg is laid on, but it also shows you what they look like in each stage of their development, which is pretty cool because with some of the caterpillars, they can look quite different depending on um, how many days they've been out of that egg. So I really love this book called The Life Cycles of Butterflies. I find this to be very helpful for butterfly gardening. Same as this one. This is called The Butterfly Book by Stokes. And they have all kinds of different books as well and books about bluebirds and uh, books about purple martins. So they're kind of experts in all of that. But what I really like are these charts that they have in the middle of the book. So if, if you're out hiking or um, in a field somewhere looking for butterflies and you want kind of a quick guide of what you might be seeing, they do have these charts in the middle of the book, which are super, super helpful to show you some of the differences between some of the butterflies that are quite common around here. So I love this one for that. And then there's also the Family Butterfly book. It's quite popular. It not only does it have species by species accounts and where they are from or where you can find them, their range maps, I guess I should say, how you can attract them, but it also has some projects to attract them to your backyards. So this one is a little bit more involved and has some projects in it if you're looking to do some things in your yard to help attract those butterflies. And then finally, if you are not only getting butterflies, but caterpillars and you need help identifying what they are, this is a huge book on caterpillars, which is pretty fun. Um, this is Caterpillars of Eastern North America, and I have yet to find anything out in the wild that I haven't seen in this book. So this is a really, really good book. Um, there's a lot in there. You can see there's a lot going on in here, but if you're starting to get more and more into butterfly gardening and you want to know what it is that's eating some of your plants, possibly, this is a really good book. It's called uh, Caterpillars of Eastern North America. So those are the books I would recommend. And then there's different things that you can put out in your yard to attract butterflies. Um, butterflies, just like other wildlife, just like birds or mammals, they also need some kind of water. And we do have these little bee and butterfly baths. It's almost just like a little bird bath. The difference is it's yellow and the color yellow does attract butterflies and other insects as well, like bees. And it comes with little stones and things like that 
to give them a place to to land on. So if it's just a bird bath, it might be a little too deep for them to land on, but this comes with some stones and you can make yourself a little bee and butterfly bath. So uh, that's, this is uh, also known as a butterfly puddler, which you can make on your own also using say an old dish or uh, maybe an old bird bath. And you want to put some rocks in it, you can put some sand in it, you can put some mud, and you can put some water in it, and the butterflies will not only drink the water, but they'll siphon off some of the nutrients from that wet sand and soil. So it's a good way to attract butterflies. Another thing that they will drink is nectar, and we do have butterfly nectar. This is the same company, um, Sweet Seed, Sweet Nectar, that makes hummingbird and oriole nectar that we have here. They also have a butterfly nectar. So um, you can attract butterflies not only with plants that na naturally produ uh, produce nectar, but you can put out a feeder to provide nectar also. So we do have nectar and then there's different feeders and butterfly feeders can sometimes look like hummingbird feeders like this one has a little reservoir in it for the nectar. The main difference is with butterfly feeders, they have little wicks in them because if you think of a hummingbird, they'll just dip their beak into the feeder and they'll siphon off the the, um, the nectar. They'll just drink it down. But butterflies just have that little proboscis. So what they do is they'll land on a feeder like this and they will just dab at the little wick because that moisture will come up into the wick and then they'll dab along on it. So this is one way you can attract butterflies is with some kind of a butterfly feeder that has a reservoir and has a little wick on it and we do have a couple new ones this year also which are the same kind of idea we've got this little one just a little wooden feeder you can attach it it's got a little hook right there you can attach it to say the side of a, of a, a porch or a side of a fence something like that and it's got a sponge here in the center and the idea with this is that you put the nectar on that sponge and then the same kind of thing the butterflies will land on here and they'll just kind of dab it off with their proboscis. It also does have these little tiny ports here. If you wanted to put any kind of fruit in there, you could do that as well. But if you want to provide fruit, because butterflies will eat, especially old and rotting fruit, bananas are one of those. Um, they'll, they'll eat things like nectarines and melons. You can put out a feeder like this. We just got these back in. You actually can put a banana in here and hang it and the butterflies will sometimes come to it and dab at it with their proboscis again. So kind of a mix of different feeders that are out there for the butterflies. We also do have uh, butterfly houses, but those are more for hibernation. So they'll go in those if you fill them with sticks and tall grasses, they'll sometimes use those to wedge in if, if you've got butterflies, say like a morning cloak, that will spend the winter in its adult butterfly form. They'll use those for hibernation. So um, as far as attracting a lot of them to your yard, a puddler or the feeders, and especially plants, of course, are the way to go. And now, finally, if you're interested in raising some, there's lots of milkweed out there right now. Check those leaves for the monarch butterfly caterpillars. They're probably the easiest to raise. And we do have some different things. We have the little pop-up insect net so this one would be a little small for more than say one uh one butterfly or one caterpillar but we do have these little ones right here these little pop-ups but then we also have larger pop-ups like this this one's quite a bit larger and not only does it have everything in it that you would need to house any kind of caterpillars that you're raising but it comes with a voucher too so you can send away for painted lady caterpillars to raise which is a lot of fun and then you can let them go. So we do have these kits as well. Or if you just want to kind of go out and see what kind of fun things that you can find in your yard and you're looking to catch things if you've got a little insect house, keep in mind that the wings of butterflies are very, very delicate. So you might not want to catch butterflies so much with these nets, um, but you can catch all kinds of fun insects. So we do have these insect nets here as well for some outdoor play. So all kinds of fun stuff to attract butterflies and to study them in your own yard. So it looks like a couple people 
are on. Um, let's see, Duster is, saying, is on and saying hello. Patty is saying captured photos of a Baltimore checker spot butterfly at Whiting Road Nature Park last week. All right, yeah. Um, Baltimore checker spots are a gorgeous, gorgeous butterfly. They're bright orange and uh, bright orange and black, and they've got some white on them. They are really, really gorgeous. Actually, here's a nice big picture of one. So really, really cool. And uh, Patty saw these at Whiting Road Nature Park. Really neat. Very, very cool sighting there. Um, let's see. Steel Monkey is on lit. Says, hi, Liz. I saw your interview with Wendy Mills from Spectrum News at the Birdhouse. Great job. You, you nailed it. Oh, thank you. I think that was, that was from a few years ago, I want to say. I'm trying to remember. Um, and let's see. Laura is on and says, thank you. And let's see. Lynn is saying, do I need to add more salt to my puddler after a while. It couldn't hurt. Yeah, it couldn't hurt to add a little bit um, of uh, granulated salt, maybe even some like sea salt with the thicker granules. And Ed is announcing lots of good information again, Liz. Thanks. Absolutely, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's kind of a brief show uh, today, but we'll be back on Saturday with another broadcast. And until then, have a great week and we'll talk to you soon.